I want to share with you today, and the title of what I want to share is Identity Theft and Extreme Makeovers. Um, so just to uh, sort of explain from the very beginning, I'm going to be talking about the difference between being in Christ and Christ being in you. So we're going to start with our identity and, of course, um, our former identity, at least when we were created and when God created us, He created us from the, from the dust of the earth, from the, the earth and from the dirt, and some people call us jars of clay. Um, but if we were a jar of clay or if we are an earthen vessel, it means that we were a vessel. He made us a vessel and he made us to be inhabited, but we'll get into that more in just a minute. Um, but if, if we were made that, that person and we were made from the dust of the earth, um, then I wrote this sentence, all you are in your f flesh, all that you are, this is all that you are in your flesh is what earth existence has stamped upon your clay until you receive Jesus. It's just like, uh, the earth and earth life is stamping these different things on our clay and it's saying, you know, this is your identity and this is who you are. And so we go by uh, people's opinions and that can be parents or that can be teachers or that can be our friends or, or whatever. We go by circumstances and they're stamped into us, whether those circumstances are good or bad. We, we can, we'll go by our limitations or our talents and abilities and that's stamped into us and then of course our failures <clears throat> or our successes uh, so all of those are stamped into our clay but that's before we've received Christ um, as the treasure within us and so um, so we can just say this that you and I are meant to be more than an identity based on impressions in clay. Impressions that have been put in clay. We are made for more than that. So then when we get born again, of course, that begins a new identity in the uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, which we all should know really well. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, so here we go, we're talking about our identity, and we're talking about identity theft. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God. So, as I said, we were clay vessels before we received the Lord, but when we received the Lord, we received a treasure within us. And uh, most of you know well Second Corinthians 4, 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And might I even add that the ex excellency of the power may be of God and not the impressions in our clay that happened before we met the Lord. Those are not supposed to be our identity. Um, <clears throat> and so the treasure begins to be formed in us and with that, all the, all the things that we did before or were or experienced and all that are no longer in the forefront. Um, and we begin to take on uh, an identity that he has given us. And Ephesians 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 4 through 6 says, But God, you know, so it's talking about us being in sin and being separated from the Lord and da 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 but then it starts with but God but God see there's your divine intervention there's the thing that's going to make the difference but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ for by grace are you saved and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Okay, so most of us know that, and most Christians know that. They know somewhat of that anyway. They know that um, uh, they are saved. They know Christ is in them. They know many of these different things. But um, I think a whole lot of Christians, 
experience identity theft. And that is that even though they're born again and even though they are in Christ, even though they, they are in Christ and they know that, that theologically identity theft begins to take place. And the devil comes in and begins to try to rob us of our identity in Christ. And we know what the, the scripture says. The, the devil condemns us. The devil came to, as a thief to steal and to rob and to take away. The devil is an accuser of the brethren. Um, and so he begins to, even though we're in Christ and even though God beholds us in that position, uh, identity theft begins to take place and we begin to fall back on our old identity and our old ways and old thinking instead of being renewed in the spirit of our mind. And so, and of course the scripture says that the devil goeth about seeking whom he may devour. And that means that there's some that he can't find or he can find them but they won't let him devour them. But he's seeking the ones that that are not fastened in this identity of being in Christ. He's the accuser of the brethren and Jesus said that he is a liar and he is the father of it. So remembering that um, our identity changes when the new, when the, well all things become new and that all things is the treasure. <laughs> is new. He, is, he is newness of life in us and um, and so we but we've been also placed in him and raised up and made to sit together so <clears throat> when the enemy you know and most of us know this but I'm contrasting and I'm still on being in Christ I'm contrasting that here in a minute with Christ in you when the enemy comes and you know and I've done this I've even written songs about it. when the enemy comes and starts saying you know well you're a failure and you're this and that and you're all that you know I've said things like take it up with my boss and take it up with my attorney. Um, and that's a good way to do it because, you, you know, your identity is based on him and let the enemy talk to him, not just to you. And to do that, you are doing something in a, in a really good way. You're not pointing to yourself. You're not pointing to yourself. You're pointing at him and you're saying, there's my identity. There's who I am. There's who I'm joined to. And um, so <clears throat> we, when we do that correctly and we're walking with the Lord, we are not, oh gosh, I, just, I could just go off in this area, but we're not thinking of ourselves and poor me or I'm in condemnation. So I'm going to, we're thinking of him and we're thinking that he did this, his great love wherewith he had loved us. And brought us into that, and um, and if it's done properly, we are thinking in terms of get ready. We're thinking in terms of faith in oneness, faith in oneness. Okay, and there'll be a contrast to that one. All right, so let's um, and of course before we get into the other one. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says this, and we should all know this, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. So let's start getting into the extreme makeover now, not just identity theft. Identity theft is uh, him trying to convince you that you're something you're no longer. He's trying to get you focused on yourself instead of the Jesus that you are in and that you are joined to. He's trying to rob you of faith in oneness. <clears throat> now we want to talk about extreme makeover. Um, and maybe not all of us, but a bunch of us need an extreme makeover. I could use one. <laughs> oh yeah, we're talking spiritually though. Um, so there's something greater than just um, being in Christ. And I know that's hard for some people to believe. There's something greater than just overcoming identity theft and standing against the devil and pointing to Jesus and saying that's who I'm with. That thing that is greater is an extreme makeover. I don't know if that's the real term they use, but that's the one the Lord gave me, extreme makeover. And... Um, and uh, it is greater than faith in oneness 
because it's literally the one. It's not oneness and being identified with oneness by faith. It is the one in you. It is the one. Okay. So, um, in, in faith and oneness, we're sort of holding on to something that isn't true in a certain sense. I mean, it is spiritually, but one reason why we would doubt or the devil could get in is because we show signs of things that are not holding to that faith. <clears throat> but one, I'm just going to use that terminology. I'm going to take it greater than oneness. One is his life in us. His mind, that's him, it's the one. It's not identifying with that, it's him. It's his mind, it's his life, it's his nature, it is him, it's the one. The devil isn't coming up against a believer and trying to shake his faith. <laughs> the devil and you are coming, and, are coming up against the reality that it is Christ in us. It is the one. And so <clears throat> that first one that we talked about deals with identity theft, it, but it's dealing with your identity in Christ. It's dealing with your identity in Christ, um, which is what? It's supposed to be who He is unto you. But the second one, like it says in Galatians 2.20, not I. But Christ, not even I'm going to, you know, I'm I'm not saying this is the full fact, but I'm going to say it like this. It's as if there's no you in him to be identified. It's not you. It's Christ. But it's still true that we are in him and we are secure in him. And, and so. Um, so. Like I said, that first one is faith in oneness. Oh, I need to keep my faith in oneness. But the second one is Christ being formed in us. Woo, I almost said, oh, baby, that's an extreme makeover. That's extreme. Um, um, one, I, I wrote this down. One accepts how far from Jesus we are, but we hold by faith. And it's, it's kind of that way. In Christ... It's kind of like recognizing how far we are from Jesus, but Jesus says we're in him, so I'm going to hold to that. Whereas the other one is saying, I reject my lack. I reject me. I'm crying out for an increase of Christ in me. I want an increase of Christ, not I want a faith that can hold to oneness through the storm. I want Christ formed in me to such a degree that I'm uh, that the I'm not just standing on a rock and the devil's trying to knock me off. The rock is being formed in me. Praise God. So the real you. The Lord gave me this in this specific way to say it to you. The real you is behind the veil. It's behind the veil. And I want to give you scripture to, to validate that. But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. That, those scriptures in 2 Corinthians 3.18, the verses in front of it are talking about a veil. It's over us. It's talking about uh, a separation. It's talking about. It's it's talking about. We're outside of the veil, and he's behind the veil. And all the verses leading up to that are saying, "Well, that's a problem." But when it gets to Second Corinthians three eighteen, it's talking about that veil is rent, and there's who we are. It's Christ, and we're changed into that same image. That's who we are. It's in the Holy of Holies. It's behind the veil. That's where we're going to know who we... That's really going to be the fullness of our identity. And it won't be a far away identity. Way up in heavenly places. It'll be right here. 
Not I, but Christ. You, but, but still breathing out those words, you must increase and I must decrease. And still with all your heart desiring more of Jesus because he's the ancient of days. He is, he is the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. He's Alpha and Omega. There's, we don't have it all, but we have him and he's all. And we can always trust that it's not just a faith toward him somewhere. It's a life that is in us. What a great extreme makeover that is. So, um, so I, I just wrote down, we are changed from one glory, a new identity, to another person changed into that same. You see that difference? One is, one glory is, it's a lesser glory, we can identify in Christ. But the scripture there says from glory to glory is actually, the original Greek is from one glory to the next. The next glory is we behold his face and are changed from glory to glory into that same image. So it's a change into a person, not just a faith that, that's built up. So... Uh, most of us are familiar with John 15. It talks about the vine branches. Um, and it says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. All right, so... This is talking about us being in the vine, in Christ, and the vine being in us. Now, the, he says, without me, you can do nothing. Um, he's talking about Christ in you. If, if you're just holding on to your identity of being in the vine, that's fine. But that life that is the vine has to come into us. And when it comes into us, it produces something. The life that's in us produces the fruit, not the fact that we're abiding in him. You see, it's two different things. And that's what Jesus is trying to bring out, this, this difference between getting over identity theft and coming into an extreme makeover where you blossom out, the life in you does and brings forth all of those things. So... Abide in me, that's your new status. But, but you are, you know, and that status says, okay, I'm saved and I'm of God and I'm secure and I'm accepted in the beloved and I'm counted as righteousness, counted as righteousness, but it's imputed righteousness at that stage. But me and you, that's you and him, but me and you is, you can't produce anything that pleases the husband and the father unless it comes from me in you. Man, that's making you over. That's making, that's a makeover. Man, your hair's looking good. Your face is looking good. Never, anyway, so finally, you in Christ, you're in Christ through his death, but Christ is in you by his life. Praise God. And both are necessary. Jesus even said, I and you and you and me. So it's, they're both necessary. We need to, we need to stop the, the identity theft and we need an extreme makeover. And we need to move into that. <clears throat> All right. So I think I probably ran out of time. But um, so which are you working on? You know, you can, you can spend your whole time only working on keeping hold of Jesus from a distance by your faith in oneness. Or you can also add to your faith the fact that the one is in you and he, and, and just feed him. He grows on, he feeds on the word of God, feed him. Feed him the word, the scripture, and put that word in you and, and watch him expand. And then that life brings forth something that is worth something to the Father. Because it's the Son. And it's the one. It's not faith in the oneness. It literally is the one. 
Let's pray. Lord, we just rejoice. We just thank you. We thank you that we do have faith in oneness with you in Christ and that we are held there and we are held securely and we can, we can, we can always stand on the fact that we are accepted not based on our good works or whatever, but accepted in you and that there is no condemnation as long as we're in you. And Father, that's, that's wonderful. But Jesus, you are the one who expressed to us, go further, get an extreme makeover, go further. Um, let me be in you. Let me bring forth. Let not just you abide in me in oneness, but let me literally be in you, the one. And Father, we want Jesus and we want an increase of Christ more and more. And we want a decrease and we cry out from our hearts. We cry out with joy and we cry out with agony. It's funny how we can do both, but we do it because we, we, it's such a, an extreme makeover that we want that it, it causes extreme crying out. But at the same time, we have a faith and anchor to our souls. And we can rest in you and know that we're secure right now, even if the if the even if there are many areas we're aware of where your your life, your vine life hasn't filled in into our branch. We can still have joy. And we thank you. And we thank you. We ask you to do both and make it real. Lord, for those struggling with identity theft. Let the Spirit of God bring forth the reality of Christ, of them being in Christ, Father. Hallelujah. Through His death. And for those that are secure, they're secure with you, but they, they, would, they, they would think, others might think of them, you should be content. You're secure. Everything's good. For those, though, that want more, that, 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 that want uh, the one and not just faith in oneness increase in them and bring forth of your spirit and your life and your nature be manifested through earthen vessels so that others see a treasure in them not just a faith in them for we ask it in jesus name amen man thanks guys i love you i love you i love you i know you're I know you're with the Lord. I know that. I, I, you'll see it in my newsletter that's coming. I know you're with the Lord, but I also know that we're still pursuing because we're not just, we're not pursuing to be in Christ. Most of us are not. We know we are, and we're we're, we're settled. We're settled. We're just wanting that increase of Christ in us, and we know that as it comes. It's more and more and more an extreme makeover that's happening in us. Praise God. I'm with you. I'm praying for you. I love you. Bye, y'all.